So we're gonna look at the Lego brick. Now I've already built this brick, but I wanna show you a few things that will make this a lot easier for you. We're using Lego units, which are close to millimeters, but not quite. They don't let you use custom units in here. So I just went ahead into units right here and I dropped it into millimeters. The reason I chose Lego units is because almost all the measurements that you make in here are either an integer value, meaning a whole number, or there are, some of them will be a half value. So you're gonna see a radius later on, it's gonna be one and a half units, meaning the diameter is three units. So in order to make this a lot easier, I go to grid settings right here, and I just set, instead of adaptive, I went to fixed, and I went major grid of one, and minor subdivisions. If you really want, you can do two subdivisions, but that just made it too complicated and messy looking for me. So I just went uh, one subdivision right there. I'm intentionally not gonna show you some of the more detailed parts of this. What I will show you, the bottom sketch, I'm gonna right click, I added some dimensions, and I'm gonna go show dimension right there. So now you can see it's 10 by 20 units, and almost everything here is an integer, which is nice. I don't really care about the fillets. I did put fillets on these little pieces right here, just on the, the top circles. I remember when I played with Legos, digging my fingernails into the corner and my fingernails would start getting like messed up. So I have a feeling there's no real fillets on Legos overall, except just the little ones up here. So they snap together. So I'll show you the top view. So you can see right here. If you're very careful, you can actually see quite a bit of information this way. Uh, you are going to follow along with the tutorial, but you're going to use Lego dimensions. So all the dimensions that are mentioned are not going to work for us. You're going to have to use custom dimensions. So we're using the Lego units here, and that means our diameter is going to be three. And our two offsets, our radius is one and a half, which is half of three and then we're one unit from the edge of that circle to the edge of the Lego brick. And same thing over here, we got one unit from the edge to the circle and one and a half units to the center. So that makes the other dimension two and a half. You cannot actually dimension a body, but you sort of can. And the way I did it in my top sketch is where all my dimensions live. And what I did is I right clicked and did well, I did show dimension. Normally it's hide dimension. I just click show dimension and then your dimensions are gonna always be displayed even if you're not actually focused on that particular sketch. So what we're gonna do next is basically do the same trick to dimension out all of this. And in order to do that, we need a construction plane to project onto. So I'm gonna build an offset plane now it's tempting to just build it right on top of one of these little circles, but if you do that, the plane won't stick out very far. So it won't be wide enough in all the directions. So I'm gonna undo that and we're gonna build a construction or offset plane. I'm gonna build it on the entire top. So I'm gonna click right over here and that gives me a little extension off to the sides. The distance, I'm gonna leave it zero and click okay. Now we're gonna project, which use the P key to project now, what I'm gonna click on is the top face right here and okay, finish sketch. What that did, it built a fourth sketch right here. So I just wanna look at that fourth sketch. So let's get all the other stuff out of there. Oh, perfect, it has nothing. Fantastic, all right. Let's undo this a couple times till that sketch disappears. Okay, maybe I didn't. All right, click on plane one, P to project, and what we're gonna project is this uh, top face, and hit okay, and finish sketch. There we go. Now, hopefully, I'm gonna make the top sketch disappear, the body disappear, and now you're gonna see sketch four has the geometry, the projected geometry that I clicked on. And of course, we're gonna rename this, let's call it uh, two, by four geometry sketch. And the reason I built this is so we can check all of our measurements. And the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna use a dimension, uh, the D key, 
to create some dimensions. And I'm just gonna measure, we already measured the upper left, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure the upper right. So clicking center to edge, and I'll just label it right out here. This is a driven dimension, meaning you don't get to change the value, it's determined by the geometry. And now I'm gonna make another one from there to here, drag that guy out. One more, and okay, last one. Oops, that's a repeat, hit escape. Hit the D key again. Oh. All right, dimension there to down there. Nope, wow. All right, let's just finish this guy, get back into it. D for dimension. So I wanna go here to the bottom, drag it out to the right. Okay. You can dimension the lower left than any of these other ones. I don't wanna dimension in between here, because if I do, then you'll know exactly how far to make that. You just multiply it by three. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I am gonna click finish, and if you want to, you can right click and go show dimension. And once I reveal my top sketch, I'll put the body back in the picture. Now you get to see everything. You can see all the dimensions and the body itself. At some point, you probably have too many um, too many of these dimensions on here, but that's a really good way to check to see is my object actually the dimensions that I think that it is. So we're looking at the bottom right here, and when you use that shell tool, the offset you're gonna use is gonna be one uh, unit, and you can see that happen right from there to there. You can see it pretty clearly is gonna be one unit because I have my grid set up to be exactly one unit on each little square. I had a little bit of trouble on that tutorial when it came to aligning everything on this inner bottom sketch. Make sure your sketches are labeled or else you're not gonna know what you're actually looking at. You're just gonna think you're looking at sketch three and who knows what sketch three actually is. So right now it's the inner bottom sketch. I know what that is. It's the inside one on the bottom. All right, so what I did, you could use a projection here, but I knew the radius from the top side. Now it's gonna be kind of annoying to scroll around to the top, but I knew the top radius was three. So what I did is I carefully went to the center and the center of this, and I built a three diameter circle, built another three diameter circle. And another thing that messed me up is this point, I, it didn't click into the right place. I think it clicked somewhere down below and which I thought was really strange because I was on a drawing plane, so I figured it would be right here. But this point was not where I thought it was and it totally screwed everything up and things would not go tangent like this. So once you got your three uh, diameter circles and you have a line from the center to the center, then you can build this, these two circles very easily. I did use the tangent right here to make sure that my circle was tangent with that uh, diameter three circle. This offset I used is 0 0.5 units. Don't have to use 0 0.5 units, uh, but something very close to that is what you're gonna need to use. And then of course, you're gonna extrude this one up. And when it comes time to extrude, how far should you extrude it? Well, everything here is an integer, so you should be able to basically extrude it a certain number up so that it's perfectly flat with the top right here. And I'll let you play around with those numbers. Now your question should be, how do I make this look awesome? Well, first thing we're gonna do is hide all these sketches that had the dimensions. They were definitely useful when we were building this, so it was accurate. So we hit all those. We're gonna right click on our body and go down to physical material. And that'll open this up. Obviously this is plastic, so we'll open up plastic and I'll just go blue. Very exciting, all right. And hit close. So now we're gonna go to render. So render is a very different mode. You don't get to change the geometry. You get to change the way it looks in render mode. You can still do a lot of the moving of the camera around. You can change a light source. I don't wanna to get too far into that, but you can tell from the shadow that there is a light source. So you can decide where you want the camera to be positioned. I think this is a pretty good spot. Render right here, you can click 
you can, of course, play around with all this right here. I'm not going to. I just want to go to render right here, render settings. You can choose the size right here. Uh, the bigger it is, the longer it's going to take. So I just want to warn you, uh, if you're going to post on Moodle, you probably don't want the width to be that much, maybe like a thousand. Well, that's not a thousand. That's a thousand by, I don't know, 600. Could use a ca uh, custom aspect ratio if you want. We'll go presentation will be fine. Uh, you can't use a cloud render without paying, so you're gonna go local render. Uh, the quality depends on your machine. I'm not gonna actually render the whole thing out, so I'm just gonna to go to standard right now. You can do some more detailed settings, but that's not super important for us. And you're gonna hit render. Now it's gonna take a while, and I'm not gonna sit here and wait the whole time. Oh wow, that went fast. All right, maybe I will sit here and wait the whole time. It will turn this into an image, and then you can save that image and do whatever you want with it. Oh, there we go, boom, done. All right, so I'll hit that little plus button. That didn't do anything, hit it again. All right, and there is a download right there, so you wanna hit download. And we'll just go ahead, drop it on the desktop, it's fine. And go check it out. Where are we at? Desktop. All right, so this is the rendered brick. It won't really let me zoom in. You can make a higher quality render if you want. You can add lights and add a ground and a whole bunch of stuff. But this way, at least it will look a lot better. You can tell there's some ideas in uh, rendering you should have three lights because if you just have one light, things look flat. This class is not about how to create good 3D art. This class is just how to model in Fusion. So I'm not gonna go into the fact that we should have had a second light source up higher in the back left and probably another one in the back right that were dimmer so that you could actually see some of the more detail, but at least we get to see a little bit of detail right here. All right, so that's how you're gonna make things look a lot cooler. So help, how do I get out of this mode? That's pretty easy, you just click the render. Uh, we've done everything in design. So just click on design, boom, you're right back here. So we're about to make our second Lego piece. And before we do that, we have to take our current body and turn it into a component. So we're gonna go new component. And because I've already selected the Lego brick, it, it's already defaulted to from body. Uh, or you can also just go click and select to make sure you select the body right there and hit OK. And that automatically created what's called an assembly up here. But what really happened is that body, which is kind of hard to tell, but it looks almost like a cylinder, is what the body icon is. The component icon looks more like a cube right there. So we just turn that into a cube. Now you can make that invisible. And let's go ahead, turn off our other sketches. If you want, you can reuse your sketches. Uh, I recommend build some new ones though, unless things get crazy complicated. And let's see, you can hide that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and build some more sketches right in here. And first I'm gonna go ahead and build a new component. And I'm gonna do an empty component and let's call this uh, I think one of the most common Lego pieces is a one by two, although maybe a two by two will be more similar to the four by four or four by two. And hit OK. Now we're into this new component right here. And you can do whatever you want down here to build your second brick. We're going to look at how to use the grid in a very smart way here. So I'm building the two by two Lego block, and that means it's going to be 10 units by 10 units. And when you have this nice grid right here, it's super easy to count 10 by 10. And you could dimension it out, but I think just eyeballing it's good enough. Now we're going to start on the top right here. We're going to go create sketch, go right on the top. And let's go ahead and look at now make sure you got your sketch grid turned on and your snap turned on 
Now I know when I build my circle, I wanna go two and a half over, two and a half down. Currently, the way the grid's set up and the snap works, I can't go two and a half. I can either go two over, two down, or three over, three down. I can't go two and a half over. So what we're gonna do is grid settings, and now we're gonna actually bump the minor subdivisions to two. You could put it uh, higher than that if you want, but two is exactly what I need here. And now when I go build my circle, let's see, there's one, two and a half. And then it's a little tricky because they don't really show me the grid right there. All right, you don't have to use the snap, but you can tell I'm snapping when you see that little blue rectangle show up right there. So that'll drop it. And now I can use the snap feature I can do any half, oh, I thought I could do any half. Oh yeah, that is a half, because that would be a half, half, another half, all right. And there is my circle drawn. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that tool. I accidentally made a construction, or maybe I didn't. Oh, come on. Well, now apparently I don't know where the heck that circle went. Oh, great, I put it on the bottom. So hopefully you don't make that mistake. Um, I'll fix that later. And it's also a construction circle. So again, if your grid is set up nicely, you can get these nice uh, half increments, or if you need a quarter increment, you wanna subdivide into four. And that should help you snap around and do things a lot faster. As you're going and building more and more uh, components, you need to start being careful about how things are organized. So unfortunately my origin sketches and construction all should have been inside this Lego brick here. But when going forward, I want to make sure that that actually happens. I built my two by two with all the sketches right inside. So just to warn you, if you have your two by two brick highlighted, let me make my two by four invisible. I got my two by two highlighted. If I go new component even though i'm going to go empty component <clears throat> where it actually landed was inside my two by two component that's not where i want it so i'm going to undo that the reason it landed inside is because i had that highlighted so i want to put it in right here these are all my lego bricks so let's go ahead and call that all bricks once this is highlighted, these are all my bricks, you can unhide them and see all of them. Uh, now I'm gonna hide the other two. So now I got all bricks selected. Now when I go assemble a new component, this component is gonna be created in the all bricks assembly, not inside one of the other components. So we're gonna call this a one by two brick. Now once this is done, I can make my sketch carefully. Hopefully that's the right plane. I'll go ahead, boom, five, 10. That'll be my next brick. Uh, now if you build, when you build this uh, one by two brick, there's no interior vertical post that goes inside. It's just completely hollow inside. So there's actually quite a few less steps. Uh, once you have this done, we're gonna do a few more things with it later. We're gonna copy and paste a component now. And if you just naively copy and paste, so if you just right click, go copy. Now, when you paste it, you can't paste into itself. Well, I guess you could, but you wanna paste into up here. We're gonna go paste. Now, this little colon one and the colon two, what that means, it's the same object, it's just a copy of the object. And let's go ahead with this second object. We'll move it over like that, hit OK. Now if we go to brick one and let's go body one, um, what can we do? I'll just delete that right there. Now look what happened, it modified the second copy of it. What I, so. You may want this to happen, uh, but what I really want is a second independent copy right here. So I'm gonna undo a couple times until I no longer see, all right, the other brick disappeared. So what we're gonna do is copy again, and then we're gonna paste up here into the all bricks, but this time we're gonna go paste new, 
And what that means, hit OK. What that means is whatever I do to this brick is not going to affect the other brick. So I want to drill a hole in this one. So I'll just label it with a hole. And then we're going to be drilling a hole out of this one. And it will not drill a hole out of the first brick. So we're about to see how to cut a hole right in the side here. Now it's important that I hide the original brick. I relabeled the one by two brick with hole so that I know it's not just the regular one by two brick. And I also hid the one by two brick so it's not gonna get in our way here. So I have this selected. I do need to make sure it's active. That's important. Otherwise you might be messing with some of these other ones by accident if you had the highest level all bricks activated. What I need to do is build a side sketch on here. So I'll just open up the sketches. And there's not one yet, but there's about to be. So I'm clicking on the side right here. And we'll go look at. And now I need to build the circle. You can see sketch right here. Sketch three just started existing. Now, if this snaps into place right here, I'll just try to eyeball it. Everything's going to be three units. And I think that's all we need. I'm going to check my design real quick, which is right here. Let's see, the bottom should be two. That's a little higher up than I think it should be. Oh, it looks like, oh, that's our inner diameter is three. Okay, if we want to add a fillet, we can add a fillet. So the outer radius will be 3.5, so your difference will be 0.5, meaning there'll be a half of a 0.5 on each side. So it'd be a 0.25 fillet right here and 0.25 fillet down there. That'll make that the difference between three and three and a half. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna do a special type of extrude here. So still E for the extrude. Now I need to go, I think five millimeters, but obviously that's not the right direction. So I don't see a a flip here so easy way to do it just go negative five boom puts it through it's important that you see the objects to cut now I'm only cutting body one but if I had the uh, this activated up here I might be slicing through a lot of things and putting holes through things I did not mean to put holes through so it's really important that you see what you're actually cutting which is this what I'm expecting to cut right here and I think we just go okay and all of a sudden we got a hole right through it. All right, so there we have our brick with a hole. You can cut holes through other size bricks as well, but the only Lego pieces that have holes through it like this are the one by, like the one by two, the one by three, one by four, etc. And of course you can use that pattern to cut uh, lots of holes at the same time and then extrude them all using the uh, cut. Let's go over what I'm expecting to see. So again, these projects are neat Lego units, not in uh, actual millimeter measures. So all the uh, measurements right here are all gonna be nice integers. All right, we'll look at the two by four Lego brick. That's the first one you, you made. I don't really care about the fillets. I know you know how to do fillets by now, so that's not a big deal. Here's the two by two brick right here. Here's the one by two brick right here. And here's the one by two brick with the hole in it. So that's what I'm expecting to see for this project. And of course, I will be checking all your dimensions 